Tennessee State continues its dominance over HBCU opponents with a 27-7 victory over Florida A&M. And if there was a less dominating 20-point victory, I don't know if I've seen it, but it just kind of underscores how bad things are in Tallahassee right now. I thought it was a tremendous performance on both sides of the ball for Tennessee State. Uh, the offense did exactly what they needed to do to win the game. The defense was impressive, but they came into the game as one of the leading defenses in the country, and they proved it during the game. Yeah, Tennessee State, the number one defense in the Ohio Valley Conference, and they certainly have proven, at least through the first month of the season, that they do, in fact, have a national championship caliber defense. But the question becomes about their offense. They've got great running backs. They seem to have quarterbacks and receivers that can make big plays, but they're by no means clicking on all cylinders yet. We've seen this before where a team that doesn't have a great offense but has a solid defense can get themselves in playoff contention. I think Tennessee State having playoff experience is really in the driver's seat. If they do just enough of the right things offensively, the defense will take care of the rest. Yeah, don't turn over the football. They didn't do that. They had a couple of uh, big defensive plays in the turnover department today. But then you look at Florida A&M, one of the storied programs in all of HBCU. BC Sports and the African American national pastime black college football is much better when you have strong teams like Florida A&M. What must they do to get their swagger back? Got to have a short memory. I think you mentioned earlier in the day that, you know, all their losses are non-conference losses. So, so they still have the ability to win a championship, but they have to win it the, the old-fashioned way, and that's dominating conference play. Well, they got some tough, tough hombres on the horizon, such as Morgan State starting. They've got two homecoming visits to Howard and North Carolina A&T, and nobody's going to feel, you know, too sad about a wounded rattler because everybody wants to take a bite out of the snake. There was a time when no one would schedule them for homecoming. Now they're everybody's meal ticket. So, you know, look, uh, it's a team that's taken a heck of a beating at the beginning part of the season. But, again, uh, they can hit the reset button yeah. and literally snatch, you know, a victory from a whole lot of, uh, you know, negativity that's happening in their program. Well, there are not too many firsts in our lives, collectively 98 years, well, 96 years on the planet between us. So few, if ever, do we get an opportunity to do anything first. But this was the first homecoming. We did Jefferson Street. Things were so good, we couldn't get the Harpers. And then there was an outside experience, the tailgating. So where you rank this homecoming, the flavor of Nashville? It's definitely in the top 10%. It's a great community to host homecoming they you know this is all about tennessee state in this area over here uh the local businesses get behind it they're playing a great venue as you can see and their people turn up so that's all you really need for a homecoming to be successful friendly people and good food and a great town the recipe certainly in place for a wonderful homecoming experience here in nashville next up you get a big meak matchup in atlanta a T versus South Carolina State. Quayshawn Quick, Tariq Owen, Buddy Pugh, South Carolina State in the ATL. That ain't a bad way to spend Saturday afternoon. Yeah, I like to look at this as Rod Broadway versus Buddy Pugh because, you know, we're talking about the upstart. And Rod Broadway is not necessarily an upstart, but he is in the MEAC versus the accomplished coach in the MEAC. And South Carolina State looking to get back to the greatness they once enjoyed in the conference. And a t looking to get back to their greatness. So... Somebody's uh, program is going to advance next week, and somebody's going to have to scratch their head and go back to the drawing board. Well, you get fish and grimps and all that pimp, you know what I'm saying, next week in Atlanta for the Atlanta Classic. I get Southern University's homecoming. So there'll be Cajun food, there'll be pasta liar, there'll be the roasted pig, it'll be all good. But you got two teams who are coming in. Arkansas Pine Bluff has been blown out the last two weeks. I mean, they've had their heads handed to them by Alabama State and then by Alcorn. And you got a Southern team that was also pounded by Alcorn earlier today. And there definitely is some controversy around compliance and all that hovering over Southern. So uh, I guess the bigger story is what are the intangibles in play in that contest? I mean, I have to call this the Rodney Dangerfield Classic because neither one of these teams is getting any respect in the swag. And I think it's important for Southern to write the ship. That's one of these programs that has to be successful in order for what I, what I in my opinion, for black college to yeah. be successful. They're one of those brands. And if they experience tough times, I believe it's a barometer for the entire HBC sports community. Yeah. What do they say if uh, the rest of the college football world catches a cold, the HBCU community catches the flu, and Southern is the defending champion who's had to deal with the compliance issues, and kids have had their basketball seasons directly 
rail. So we can only hope that the folks at SU get their stuff together. Mike is in Atlanta. I am in Baton Rouge. It's HSR in another doubleheader next Saturday. Check our website, hsrn.com, to find out what channels on satellite radio we will play. And you can find us on a radio station near you or on a website. Matter of fact, forget the website. Download the mobile app. Yeah, I thought that the National Black Pastime was Soul Train, bro. Oh, man, Don passed away a little long ago, man. Ain't nobody doing the line. They don't even do the Scrabble machine. You know, kids these days don't want to spell words. That's why I like traveling with you. I learn more every game. That's right. I'm your social pontificator. Anyway, that's the story from here in Nashville, where Florida A&M goes home with an L, and Tennessee State rolls into the Ohio Valley Conference ready to make a charge towards the playoffs. Stay with us on HSRN. We are the voice of choice. Stand up. Hey, please, please.